lot of people I don't know. Uh, yeah, where are you? Yeah, do we need to zoom in at all? Or because I, I can pull I can this can go all the way up there. I was trying to capture the whole room. Whole room. Okay. That should be good.
say these things in our Savior's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. We have a couple of members on uh, SBR that have been here at the church a long, long time. Uh, Dr. Ron Saunders has been here 24 years, and uh, Stacey King has been with the church for 27. So I've asked them to uh, lead us this evening because of their seniority with the church. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Saunders, and uh, Stacey will have some comments uh, later on. Thank you. What I'm going to try to do is go over the last couple of weeks. And I'm trying to give enough information out to you that if your questions aren't answered, we will try to answer them. However, if we can't answer them, you need to go to the district office. On November 14th, which was a Monday, the SBR committee met. We all signed a form, handwritten. We, we signed the form from the district that we wanted past today for the 2023-24 uh, year. Pastor Dave signed that form. So we were all, okay, this is, we're going to move on. Two days later, Bob, who is the SPR chair, gets a call in the afternoon from Rodrigo Cruz, who is the district superintendent. He says that the committee, the district Georgia, North Georgia appointment cabinet, has decided that Pastor Dave is going to be moved to Loganville. And he wants a meeting with SPR from here. And he wanted it then. And so we said, well, we can't get everybody together on that Wednesday. So we met Thursday. And we had him on Zoom. And it was not the best meeting in the world from us. Because we were asking questions. We were making statements to him. And, but it was a done deal. All he was doing was following protocol that they have to meet with the SPR. But it was already determined. It was probably determined two weeks ago. Who knows? But it was determined. And so what happened, uh, it all started with the Jackson United Methodist Church. Uh, the pastor left. And I think it had something to do with disaffiliation, whatever. And so they moved the Loganville pastor to the Jackson. This is the domino thing. Then they said that the uh, Loganville needed someone like Pastor Dave. Like we didn't need somebody like that. And then they moved... <coughs> Jeff Murphy, who used to be here, he used to be Jeff uh, Grubbs and Tina. 
They, he got assigned. He heard the same way that we heard. And he was, and then they moved his associate minister to be an interim pastor at Grayson. And they're saying all this is going to take place by January 1st. And so they basically, I think, threw a bomb on the table and said, you handle it. But it was a done deal. We had signed what they wanted. We wanted him to stay. Pastor Dave wanted to stay. But it didn't do. I mean, so anyway, um, uh, Bob has received a message from uh, Pastor Jeff. Say he's going to be in con contact with the SPR. Now, the reason it was, we waited, it was Pastor Dave wanted to wait till after, to the Sunday after Thanksgiving. That was his request. And that was what Pastor Jeff was going to do. That's their request. We were going to have a congregational meeting after the sermon on Sunday. But in respect to Karen White and her family, we were going to have it Monday night, but we had a men's uh, dinner here. So that interferes so tonight's the first time. And it's uh, it's been tough for all of us. We've had to live through all this. I'm not telling anyone, just having it in our own parts. And uh, we had to go through things here with that too. But you think about what's happening to the two pastors. Basically, Thanksgiving and Christmas is pretty much in turmoil. Uh, we have a parsonage. Loganville does not. So Pastor Dave and Miss Donna have to find a house between now and January 1st. And they have to go through all that packing up and everything during what's supposed to be, you know, a really nice season. So think about that. And Jeff has to do the same thing. Pastor Jeff has to come here and get going. Um, I talked to Pastor Dave yesterday, and we had a good conversation, and I was talking to him about, I wish we'd been over in St. Square, which I would practice, and now you're over here, we could have both gone over there, but anyway, <laughs> anyway, we had it over here, and we discussed this, and he told me, he says, I have to believe God has a plan. I can't see it. I don't understand it right now. But God has a plan for us and for Him. And then He prayed. We prayed over the phone for about five minutes. And He prayed for Pastor Jeff and Tina and Grayson and Winder first. And He said, I just pray that we're going to come out of this thing. God's going to come out helping us on this, that we have a plan. He has a plan. We have to believe in it. We have to have trust and faith that this is going to work out. And uh, I personally, Pastor Davis helped me tremendously, and I believe I'm a better disciple of Christ because of him. And I've been everywhere I've been. Every time he's having a prayer or Wednesday mornings, the Moody's, I'm trying to be there because he has meant so much to me and my family. So, um, now we don't know what else is going. I'm just telling you, that's what we know. That we signed off that we wanted Pastor Dave to stay here. The administration, a district, had other ideas. Now they said you could at times go over their go over their head to the bishop. And we asked Pastor Dave about that. He said it'd be a waste of breath. And let's get on with it. So I mean, Stacy, you want to say anything about uh, you know Pastor Pastor Jeff? I'm 
don't have much to say. That a lot of y'all are have been here as long as me, or, or older than me, or. Um, but I will say that I've known Pastor. I have a hard time calling Dr. Murphy um, because he was just Jeff Grubbs to me. He is actually the reason I was I joined this church. I came to this church. Um, he and Tina had a two-year-old at the time, and I was starting a home daycare. And he and uh, they came and interviewed me. And let me tell you, it was an intense interview. Um, Tina was very particular about who was going to keep her daughter. <laughs> and, uh, um, and then they invited me to church. When, when I said I would keep them, they invited me to church. And uh, so that's how I came to Winder First United Methodist, is because of Jeff. That's how I became a Methodist, because I had been Catholic, Presbyterian, and Lutheran prior to that. Um, so, uh, so I've known him for, St. Paul's tour, turning 26, and he was, so I've known them for 25 years. Um, I followed both of them on Facebook for as long as we, you know, had Facebook, and I've watched Jeff grow. Um, I've been, I went to his, um, to his church a couple of times when he was in Camden, when he first started as a minister, and um, I watched a couple of his Gainesville services several years ago, um, and then a couple of his Grayson services, and I also met with him um, on a personal level, probably 10, 15 years ago. Um, I wanted to talk to someone about some things, but not in, in, not in our church. It just it's something I needed to talk to somebody outside the church, so I talked to him. Um, and uh, he has grown so much. Those of you that, that haven't continued to keep up with him, I will say he has grown so much um, since I first knew him, um, as all pastors do. Um, and I just... Um, I just hope that you know we will be open-minded. I know we all love, love Dave, um, and I think he has, has done some amazing things. I'm very excited to finally see the God in the movies. I have heard so much about it over the, it, it seems like every week I have not been able to stay. I'm gonna stay and see what it's all about um, before it's gone. <laughs> so, <clears throat> but uh, I mean, I, yeah, he, they asked me to speak to Jeff, and I really don't, I mean, there's not a lot I can say. I will say, um, I have been in touch with Tina, and while they are very disappointed and uh, upset to be le leaving Grayson, um, they're also, you know, looking forward to being back in a community that they're familiar with. Um, so I hope that y'all will, you know, like I said, I mean, we don't have a choice in this. And that was made very clear at that meeting. This is, in case y'all don't know, this is my first time on SPR. I had no idea what I was getting into uh, when they asked me to serve. I have learned a lot this year. Um, and the one thing I have learned is a lot of decisions are not ours to make. Um, they are made for us. And this was one of them. Um, so we don't have to like it. Um, but I hope that you will not... Um, take it out on, on Dr. Murphy because he's in the same boat. This was not a choice for him either. Um, this will be, um, it, I, I watched their, their service, um, same way I watched Jeff, uh, I, when, when, when I found out Pastor Dave was coming and we were in the middle of COVID, I immediately got online and watched some of his services and was so excited. Um, so I kind of did the same thing and I watched Jeff's service, um, this past Sunday, and uh, it was, uh, this is their third move in G January, in three, th three, three Januaries and three moves, so I know they are not looking forward to this, so, and that's not, they have not changed churches, they have just had to change houses for, first because they moved, and then, I guess they had a truck or something go through their house in Lawrenceville, is what they alluded to, and so then they had to move again, um, <coughs> into a house that their congregation in Grayson basically built for them. So, um, so that now they're having to leave it a year later. So, anyways, um, I guess, are we opening it up for questions? And, okay. Uh, Robert Smith, if you have a question, and it's all your questions, we may not have the answer for that. We'll just send you <laughs> off to the district administration up there. Um, because they're the ones that have it. But Robert, I've got the uh, microphone, so if you have a, a question.
Now, get the clapping. I've got my hands full. They clapped. We've got rid of him. We've got rid of our minister. That's what the community is saying, along with our members. We should be ashamed. We should be ashamed. Why? What goal do you have? I'll tell you what it is. You're deceitful. You're biased hypocrites. But in your mind, in your mind, you are omnipotent. The world does not turn without you. The sun does not shine unless you give it permission. That's how omnipotent you feel. Because, see I can't even, because of your self-proclaimed holiness, your strong Christianity, you have destroyed a man's career without giving any regard to his livelihood that we hadn't touched on yet. You don't care. You're Christians. You proclaim it. You're Christians. Stand up and own it. What you have done to this man, it's wrong. It is wrong, folks. If you could just tell me. Just tell me. What sin has he committed? What unforgivable sin has he done to warrant this behavior? Can somebody tell me? Does anybody else want to? No. No. No one's strong enough to stand up to these people and say, why are you saying this against our pastor? We're supposed to be unified. No one stood up. I didn't. I'm as guilty as everybody else. We do not deserve day. Give me just a minute.
want to see anybody come in and say, well, gee, it's, it's, it's a book, it's a good book, but it's a myth. It's, it's a what mythology, it's, it's a whatever. But it's not the Word of God. It is the Word of God. That's what we have. That's what Pastor Dave taught. And that's why we loved him. just have one question about his salary, which you might have some facts on. If he's going to church, did you say 70 or 80 people in the membership? Is his salary going to stay where it is? I had understood, you know, pastors always had a guaranteed appointment. But. They, uh, they send a, they be in the district, send a letter to each pastor telling them what their salary will be in their new location and whether they have a housing allowance or not, that type of thing. I, we don't know what, but they have received a letter. But I just don't know what it is. Well, it's going to really, really hurt, I'm telling you. Um, <clears throat> would it be possible assuming that this is in fact a done deal and there's nothing we can do. Would it be possible to designate a fund and we can, you know, make donations to that fund to help perhaps offset offset some of the moving expenses or deposits or, you know, some of the uh, particularly this time of year, some of the unexpected, you know, expenses associated with right this move. Tithing through the church to to Dave directly. My question has to do with when the pastor receives the letter telling him what his salary and housing allowance and all that other kind of stuff is going to be, does he have any choice at that point? Is no. either accept right. what is offered or get out? Right. I'm sorry. This is wrong. Yeah, Yes, I'm very short, so I'm going to stand up. <laughs> but, you can get on the chair. Yeah. I try. Um, my name is Chu. If you don't know me, I've been with you guys for, this is our fourth year, and I love this church because of you guys. And, and because God is in this church. And so I wanted to answer that question about his um his pay. I wanted to let you guys know that within the United Methodist, we all know how, how I've been a United Methodist for 36 years. I've been on the ESPRC committee, I don't know how long, and I've been working, I worked with the conference and with the district, and I worked with bishops before. So his pay does not change it because he goes from us to a, a church, and we don't know how how big Logan Hill's congregation is, but his pay does not change because of his credential. He's an ordained minister. Ordained minister have, and an elder, they have a bracket. This is how much they pay. And so he, that, we don't need to worry about that. If they, if Logan Hill are not able to pay or give him the amount that he's supposed our district level to our conference level will compensate the rest. So I want you guys to understand that. And about giving gifts, of course we love Pastor Dave and we will give the gifts of love and encouragement and, and, and those of you that want to give monetary, that's fine. We have to understand that. I wanted to, to, to just say one word is that for us to know how much we love Pastor Dave, it is how much we should encourage and make him know that we will be better discipleship because of him, and we will be the greatest discipleship. When he leaves here to go to another church, that he knows that he has built this up, and that we will continue this church, and not for anyone else, but for God and for him, that he has made, he has planted great seed here. 
And so for him to be better, it is for us to be great.
million and a half, so our budget is what, 800 and about half of that. So to answer your question, John.
I learned to love God by watching my grandparents and my parents, my Sunday school teachers, my choir director, Buell Robinson, does anybody remember Miss Buell? Um, and many devoted pastors. Being a part of this congregation has blessed me and my family. I never tell my age, but when somebody asks me how long I've been a member of this church, I proudly say over 70 years. I was Christian. I was christened at the church on Candler Street, our regional, not our regional, but one of our churches. I was married at this church. My two girls were christened and married. I had three grandchildren that were christened at the altar. Funerals for my mother and dad and my grandparents were all held in the sanctuary. And my husband has been a member of this church since the 70s. He didn't have a choice. <laughs> Many wonderful memories rushed through my head as I, I wrote this at 3 o'clock this morning. But all I could think about was our pastor and how much I love him. Our bishop, our district superintendent, and I think a small group from this church has, has spoken out. And I was told, it's too late. The decision is made. You can't do anything about it. My first response was, has the preacher broken a law? Has he not preached against the doctrine of the Methodist Church? Has he lied to the congregation? Has he done unethical things? Did he steal? What did he do to deserve this? He did nothing. All he did was guide us and direct us in God's path. Members have said that this was, some members have said that this was Dave's decision. It was not. We were told that. The bishop, the district superintendent, and some of our members of the church have said these things. And shame on you if you have. Pastor Dave loves our church. He loves his town. And he loves his home. We are a loving church, but are allowing him to pack up and move, disrupt maybe his retirement, his plans, and devastate his wife and children. Many years ago, our family was devastated by a minister that was here at this church, and he refused to marry my sister because she had been divorced. So... We didn't ask for him to resign. We didn't get a small group together to go to the bishop. We didn't go to the district superintendent. We just, at 12.05 on a Sunday after church, she was married, and the whole congregation was present. A church member married her. But we continued at this point, as upset as we were, we continued to love our church, not destroying it by... Uh, the words of our preacher. As uh, Michelle Obama said, when he went low, we went high. Ministers are human. They cry. They grieve. They question why. They get mad. They probably stomp their feet at some point. They make mistakes. They may call you the wrong name on Sunday morning. Or they may not be as caring as you would like them to be during a trying time. But after attending Bible study this morning with Pastor Dave, I came, I had a little peace about me after Bible study. And um, I sort of stopped crying a little bit. Um, but he told me Sunday when I left church, he said, the best is yet to come. Just be patient, when." That's the sign of a true Christian. But today in our Bible study, we were studying about 1 John. And part of that was chapter 3, verse 18. And I wanted to share that with you because I think it fits today. John said, Dear children, let not... Dear children, let, let not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. Since this is over and we can't go back, my prayer today is for our new preacher that we welcome him and he'll lead us 
that we will love each other through our actions. statements tonight, and I appreciate all those statements very much, but I would be remiss if I didn't stand publicly and say that this is wrong. I do not accept it. I do not believe in my heart that as Americans, and as a Christian, and a member of a Christian body like this, has to just sit on our hands, do nothing, and go, oh, well, and as everybody has tried to say, this is going to repeat itself. Somebody has to be a martyr. Somebody. I can't be it, but I can be it with a group. <laughs> you know, in, in numbers, their strength. And again, all I know is I spent 30 plus years in middle school, so when I see wrong, I know wrong, and this is wrong, and I wish, like Chip said, if there's some way that we can undo it, redo it, I wish we had voted to disaffiliate a long time ago. In fact, one of my very best friends, son, is a minister, and they voted in a, they have two campuses, huge church in another state, but they voted 86% to disaffiliate. I love everybody. I do not judge anybody. Because you have a sexual preference or any other preference, I don't love you less. But I do love this church, and I do love the Lord, and I do believe that we need to abide by His Word. And I think His Word tells us that this is wrong, and we need to act. I don't know how to act, because I have not one second in politics. I don't wish to get in it, but good Lord in heaven, it looks like we're there. If I've offended anybody, I'm genuinely, genuinely sorry, because I never, ever want to hurt anyone's feelings. I usually just keep, well, everyone will say I keep my mouth shut, but I usually do. This is about the most important thing that I've been a part of in a long, long time. Well, in my whole life, I guess. Thank you. You know, I'm 377 this month, and I've had a lot of changes in my life. I was taught to be a racist as I grew up in the 40s and 50s. I overcame it for the most part. I do not like somebody to come in and be a part of my church and tell me that I have to change because they are there. I don't go to the modern service, but they didn't tell me I had to change and I couldn't go to the traditional service. And I support the modern service. But I do not support people that come in and put their views and tell me we have to change because they're here. And that's what the whole thing with the Methodist Church is about. Pastor Dave made it very plain as it was said when he came in, I'm going to preach from the Bible. The Bible says that some of these things are sins that they want us to accept. How many Methodist churches are leaving? I know we had a vote. It was very, very close. Nazi Germany back in the late 30s, what happened to them? They sat back, they accepted what was going on, and look at what happened to the world. I don't say this is what's happening with the Methodist church, but there's a lot of similarities in what's happening in our church today it's happening in the world in the past. And are we going to sit back and like it? 
That's another question. I'm sure this new pastor's coming in. It's going to be great. I was all in favor. I was on the committee when we talked about Pastor Dave. Listened to all his sermons for six months and thought he was going to come in and be the one that we needed to bring this church back up to what so many people have told me it was years ago. And he has tried. And as a lot of people said, there were people in his way that didn't like this, that, and the other. But I think most of the people here appreciated Pastor Dave and would like to keep him. So if we can have a committee that will make us get out of this old Methodist church and into what we used to be, I'm all in favor of sitting on it. And if you'd like to close in prayer, I'll be glad to. We did not vote. We had a vote that night. We did not vote as a church. We did not vote as a church. The vote that was, was the wrong part. Well, the vote was to whether to take it to the church uh, to vote or not. No. Yeah. No, 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 no. No, it was no, it was the vote was a council. Do you agree that we need to take it to the church to vote? And they said no. No, they yeah. did said about the meeting that took place earlier about the affiliation. And if you think for one minute that that decision not to vote did not play into this movement about, you're, you're just blowing the wind. Because Brother Murphy made a statement that he was leaving because Grayson had not made that decision in so many words. He, he inferred that, you know. They have not made the decision yet there, but they have here in Winder. So I can help, not help believing that that had something to do in the whirlwinds around the bishop's office and that, that, that forum that, hey, they've already made a decision, you know, and they haven't here. Let's, let's get some going here. That's my speech. I just want to say that I, I was on the committee to decide whether to disaffiliate or not. And we did not.
not decide not to disaffiliate. We decided not to disaffiliate now because in, in, in Mississippi, you know, I, I just was just reading, because the conference was moved to, to uh, 2024, they moved their goalpost and, and, and they're going to allow disaffiliation for a longer period of time because you didn't have all the information. You know, we, we, we were sitting there looking at disaffiliation uh, and they weren't going to vote on the reason to dis disaffiliate until 2024. We felt like the church was getting a little bit of momentum and we had some cohesiveness and we were just a little leery about putting a, something that controversial to a vote uh, at this time. But nobody in that room, at least, I did, if, if not, I didn't, I, I didn't read it properly, but we all felt like I felt like that we were just too, you know, just, let's just put this, sit on the back burner for just a little while. And, and, and so the, th the climate has changed dramatically since we made that decision. So I too would be 100% in favor of disaffiliating at this point in time. I, I think we're about out of time, if I'm not correct. Um, I do want to say one more thing, and this is, um, again, um, keep in mind that this has all been live streamed. So I don't know who all is watching, but I'm sure there are a lot of people watching. Um, Let's I, hope the bishop is. I, yeah. I, I will. I will say that um, again. I, I do hope that you don't take this out on Pastor Murphy. You know, this is not his choice either. This was, um, and I will say that I have never known Jeff not to preach from the Bible. Um, to my knowledge, he is a conservative minister. Um, and I think that is, you know, I, I hope that y'all will, will give him a chance to come in and, and assess and see, you know, what we need to do as a church. One question, um, is the movie more important than get something done? I'm not in charge of that. Somebody is. <laughs> All we're going to do is discuss, we get anywhere, I don't think that we, ha in, in order to make those decisions, that there's a process that you have to follow in the Methodist Church. That's one thing I have learned in, in, in being on SBR this year is that there are a lot of processes. And, and the, 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 other, the, the other thing that I have learned, and I'm sorry, um, you know, because I love you dearly, um, the one thing that um, I have learned is that we are not a, I can't, I can't remember how it's word. We're not a congregational, not a, not a congregational, um, I lost my, denomination. We don't vote by, con that, that there's a process you have to go through committees. And that's the way it was set up. And we were the United Methodist Church when I joined it. I, I lived oblivious in, in it for 20 something years. Um, but as long as we are a part of the United Methodist Church, there is a process that we have to follow. Um, I don't even know exactly what the process is because, again, I'm a newbie at this. But I don't think that I think that there are, are people that can start that process, but I don't think it can be started tonight. Um, Why? Why? Why can't this be a committee and the people that want to start something raise their hand and say, "Let's go." How does this work, Ron? I, you can't do that. There's there's rules to that. I mean...
And we all, we all love God, and we all love Pastor Dave, and we love one another. And we're here to encourage and to support as we grow in spiritually with God and have this relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. And you know, in, I, I want to pray for us, but I want to, before I pray, I give us a, a Bible verse to, to help us. It's in Psalm chapter 121, verse 1 to 2. And they say, I lift up my eyes to the mountain. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And no matter how much we argue, how much we support one another, there's only one God. And there's only one person who can help us. And our prayers is so important. We need to pray. We need to pray for Pastor Dave. We need to pray for the pastor that we are going to receive. And we are going to pray for us, for each other. That what we are doing is what, what God wants us to do and not what we want to do because we're all sinners. Okay, so let us bow in now. Heavenly Father, how great thou art. We humble ourselves at your feet tonight. There is so much that we don't understand. But Lord, we're not supposed to. You're the maker. Your uh, Lord, you made the heaven and earth. You make us. You know the plan for our church, for each and every one of us. And you know the plan for Pastor Dave. You gave him the greatest gift of all, which is to be your servant. And you say you will send your servant to where your servant is needed. And Longerville needed him, Lord. And we love him. We don't want him to go, but you always let us know. You told us, and you promised that if we listen to you, Lord, we will know as we go through this path, you are our light. You will lead us, Lord. And so you will lead Pastor Dave. And we know that he is the gift. He is the peacemaker because he is a true servant of yours. He follows you, he obeys you, as well as we will obey you and follow you, Lord. As John Wesley said, do no harm. Lord, a lot of our United Methodist Church has gone so far away from our, from our founder, which is John Wesley. But we ask that you forgive us and give us the wisdom to continue, Lord. We know that same love, divide and conquer, but Lord, we are with you. Who should we fear? No one. We are your soldier. We are your hands and feet. And we're here to do your will. And not our will, but your will, Lord. And so we know that you are with us as we depart from this, those that are staying here, those that are going on, Lord. Be with us. Protect us. And let us know that every second, every minute, we are in mission for you, that we will not just sit quietly, but we will fight for you till the end when we are with you. So we all give ourselves to you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.